I'm a I'm an artist. What I want to do is do a human piece. I want no go for it. Go for it, man. Not a problem. And it's a it's a human piece. So what I'm doing is I'm going around and I'm purchasing signs. So you're going to be a part of this piece. You're going to be part of this story. And the reason why we're filming this is so people can see that it's human. It's it's something that people can listen to, put a face on it, and everything like that. So your story is going to be on this canvas. And the reason my sign is how it is mm -hmm. is because I've had cops pull me over and said I'm not allowed to ask for money. Like, you know. So I was trying to think. I don't. I don't want people to tell. I have to tell people I'm homeless either. Mm -hmm. It's not long. Yeah. There's nothing about me not having a job. All it <laughs> says is a statement. I'm dreaming of a cheese. Yeah. Let's stay. Yeah. So I want to put together a human piece, and I wanted to incorporate something that you see every day, and I wanted to take an object and apply it to my canvas. I mean, when you're driving, even when I was driving over here to uh, Lance's apartment, uh, I saw three, ho actually two homeless people. And usually they are carrying a sign and you get the best of, you know, I'm a vet or I have a family, uh, I need a job, I'm hungry. And I got this idea to take the signs that the homeless was holding and put it into my canvas. So obviously when you go into a museum, uh, you're oohed and odd. You're acknowledging it, which is the complete opposite of the homeless. You don't acknowledge these people. You kind of turn away. It's not beautiful. Seeing a homeless person, it almost disrupts that. Obviously, I asked John, that's the gentleman's name. So, even though I introduced myself, he was really stubborn. So, he was like, I don't shake hands. And there's, there's a lot of, I would say, yeah, there's a lot of homeless people who uh, are, are very standoffish. Yeah, we're, we're doing a little documentary. He's doing an art project. We just want to like hear from someone in, in your shoes and just what, you know. Drug addicted is what it is. Yeah. You know, and I'd probably say, it's safe to say, 80, 90% of us out here on the corner flying science to get money is our main goal. And we're going to get food and, and, and uh, whatever else we can get. But the heroin, better just to pass out food. You know? Yeah. Because money is just going to go straight in the water. And, and what, what kind of food would that be? Well, I mean, canned food probably. Canned food and stuff? So yeah. stuff that won't be perishable. Sure. Yeah. Uh, socks is a big deal. Well, speaking of socks, yeah. Man. That's awesome. Yeah. There you go, man. So, yeah. <laughs> Feet get pretty tore up out here, so socks are always really Not bad. Cool. It's hard to get a, a medical detox, which is kind of what a heroin addict needs. I mean, yeah. Some people are able to do it like in jail or something, like when they don't have a choice. Yeah. But uh, there's a place downtown called Community Bridges, and uh, they help alcoholics and, and drug addicts and 
stuff, but it's just so hard to get in there. It seems like you got to be damn near dead. Have they, have they denied you? Yeah, a lot of times. They, even though you, you plead and said, hey, I need some help. Yeah. And even you coming in there as a, you're volunteering, obviously. <laughs> you're volunteering yourself saying, you know what, I want to get better. And they deny you. Yeah, they say I don't score high enough. Wow. As far as, uh, Define score high enough. On, on withdrawal okay. uh, So basically, they say I'm not sick enough. So uh, you you have to be almost dying yeah. in order to get to get in there and get treatment. Hook it up. Hook it up. Here you go, man. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. You're very thank welcome, you. sir. I got you, man. Okay, yeah, yeah thanks, man. God but yeah. God bless you, man. Yeah, thank you. That's true. I don't know you do sound I like talking to people. Mm -hmm. It's more fun. I like your beard here. <laughs> I like your beard too, man. I yeah, like your costumes, flex it. Man. I got your back, motherfucker. You guys both get lucky, but that was the same girl. See you, man. <laughs> I love doing this. This is so great. <laughs> What's your name? Valerie. We've been married 19 years. I still ain't over that. You know, so sometimes I just want to do that. But you know, many prayers as I've prayed for God to just take me when I go to sleep. I wake up the next morning and I guess he ain't ready for me. that the homeless population 
it sucks. Keeps me from driving this car. Half light jackknife into the canyon at night. Signs and wonders. Mercy is alive with a score. I think it's going to bring a light on to, to people that, that normally, you know, like for example, Paul, I mean, he had this tone in his voice that he had no reason to live anymore. And it, that kind of really tug on my heart. Um, I, I pray for people that I didn't think I would pray for. Um, you know, these guys are like Paul, Shane, Rocky, um, you know, the others that we met. It's constant thoughts and who and, and we're warriors for them that normally people don't aren't warriors for and uh, I don't know I, I guess I guess we are going to shine a light on their story and who knows like what's the outcome of this right now it's it's just kind of in its first stages but I don't know I think I think it's it's gonna be some good everything I see Turns to you somehow. Shall I tear my heart out now? Everything I feel returns to you somehow. Mm -hmm. I want to save you from your sorrow. and I started talking to him and, and he goes, yeah, I, and I asked him and I, I don't know, and I didn't ask him, I told him I knew about his uh, ministry that he does every uh, uh, fourth Saturday. What he does is he goes down to Sunny Slope and I'm not making this up right now. He actually serves cheeseburgers to the homeless. And I told him, hey, I have this idea that I'm putting this show together at Rebel Lounge and uh, I have a whole bunch of people that are involved and everything. And he was kind of leaning on his chair a little bit. He, he wanted to he wanted to tell me before I even finished my story. And I said, hey man, I'm, I'm gonna donate all this money to you. I, I wanna give it to your ministry. And he goes, wait, what? You, you, wanna, you wanna give me money? And, he, and at first he thought I was asking him for money to like help us out. And uh, he's, he was really uh, took it back from that because he always gives. He's been doing this for uh, like 20 years now. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of nice because he's, he's a godly man, but he likes walking the walk. He doesn't like talking the talk like a lot of groups here in Phoenix do. And uh, they pocket a lot of that money. And he doesn't do that. He, he gives back constantly. And uh, I don't know, it's, it was kind of nice. So this guy in his mid 60s was like 
a, a kid again. He kind of jumped out of his chair and gave me a hug, and, and then that was it. And Before I see too much, should I tear my arms out now? I want to feel your touch. Should I tear my eyes out now? Everything I see returns to you somehow. Should I tear my heart out now? Everything I feel returns to you somehow.